This video series was made possible by Eric Schaefer Guitars, Luther's Mercantile International, and Stumac. Welcome back to the shop, friends. In episode number one of the series, I introduced the build material for the acoustic guitar. In episode number two, we built the guitar mold, which serves as not only a template, but it's also critical for glue up of all the parts of the guitar. Today, we are officially starting the guitar, and I'll show you the build of the back portion of the guitar sound box. That's known as the back plate. If you'd like to start from episode number one, I'll link that above for you now. I chose this beautiful Indian rosewood for the guitar back. The pieces of rosewood were sent to me at about 17 hundredths of an inch thick. Surprisingly, this is quite oversized, as the ultimate thickness after final sanding will be about 9 hundredths of an inch. The first step to build the back of the guitar was to joint the edge of the boards so that they can be glued together without any gaps. This joint is critical. To the structure of the guitar, the joint must be as perfect as possible. The jointing board was built for this purpose. It's a great tool for edging the thin sides. Attempting to joint the boards upright in my vise would likely end miserably with failure. The jointing board is simply a few pieces of plywood screwed and glued together with a stop block. I also added a couple clamps to hold the guitar pieces firmly to the jig. A high quality power joiner could probably be used for this operation, but I do not have one. I used my Stanley low angle plane set to fine shavings to joint the edge. I frequently would check the joint to see the progress. The progress was a little bit slow, but was complete in about an hour. Once the joint was close, I would hold the joint up to a light to assure no light was passing through the joint. To fine tune the joint, I used 220 grit sandpaper adhered to my three foot level. This was an easy way to perfect the glue joint. Before gluing the pieces together, I used the guitar mold to mark out the layout of the guitar back. This allowed me to pick the area of the back with the most interesting grain pattern. The pieces of rosewood are too thin to glue together with clamps, so I used a simple jig. The jig is comprised of a couple pieces of particle board sandwiched together with runners and a plywood fence glued to the top. To use this jig, the boards to be glued must have a taper. I use tape to secure the boards together, use the straight edge to make a taper along the outer edge of the boards outside the area which will become the guitar back. I then took that over the bandsaw and cut the taper. To make the taper a little more consistent, I used my hand plane on the shooting board. To glue the boards together, I clamped a fence to the glue up jig. The second fence is not permanently affixed to the jig so that it can be optimized to the shape of the workpiece. Once the fence is aligned, I placed a piece of wax paper to prevent the workpiece from being glued to the jig. I used a thin strip of wood glue and spread it out with my finger along the glue line. I then pressed the guitar back into the jig. I used a piece of particle board clamped down over the workpiece to prevent buckling and then gently tap the workpiece into the jig. This provides the needed clamping pressure for a perfect glue up of the very thin pieces. After the pieces were glued together, I thickness the workpiece to 15 hundredths of an inch. At that time, I used the bandsaw to remove a corner of the workpiece to use for the bridge plate of the soundboard. The bridge plate is a support for the bridge. If you recall from episode one, that is where the strings attach to the soundboard. More of that in the next video in the series. I then roughly cut out the shape of the back plate on the bandsaw, leaving about an eighth of an inch of material. Once the back plate was roughed out, I turned my attention to the bracing. The bracing provides support for the thin glue line of the guitar back and provides the shape for the dome structure. The first brace is called the back strip. I use an off cut of spruce from the soundboard that I cut off camera. I used a combination of 220 grit and 320 grit sandpaper adhered to a piece of particle board to smooth out the edges. To glue the back strip and braces to the back plate, I used the go-bar deck. The go-bar deck is a jig for using flexible fiberglass rods or sometimes wooden sticks for clamping pressure. The jig is simply made from pieces of plywood or particle board separated by threaded rods and pipes. The hardware for this handy jig was provided by one of our series sponsors, Stumac. Stumac is a well-known Luther supplier that specializes in tools for guitar building and repair. On their website, you'll find specialty tools, build materials, tone woods, guitar building kits, and much more. Many of the tools that I'm using for this project, including the GoBar deck, 
radius dishes, and thumb planer from Stumac. If you decide to build a guitar, you will find most woodworking stores do not carry many of the luthery specific tools, so keep Stumac in mind. The back strip is about 15 hundredths of an inch thick. The grain pattern opposes the grain of the back plates. I wanted the back strip to have a rounded appearance, so I planed down the edges with the thumb plane and then rounded over the edges using a sandpaper block pre-shaped to my design. I made a block with several grits of sandpaper. For the back bracing, I cut down the brace stock with my table saw. Cut the pieces to length using my back saw. The back has four main braces and I wanted each to fit nicely around the back strip. So I took some time to form the joint as closely as possible using a shop made sandpaper sanding jig. Each of the braces need to be shaped to the contour of the appropriate radius dish. The back is shaped to a 40 foot radius. To do this, I marked off the material to be removed on the radius dish and then removed it with my hand plane. Then I sanded each brace against the 80 grit sandpaper adhered to my radius dish. After some time, each brace was in the shape of the dish. I then glued the braces to the back plate using the go-bar deck and the radius dish. By gluing the braces against the radius dish, the back plate will conform to the radius dish. I then cleaned up the excess glue. Once the bracing was dry, I took them out of the go-bar deck and began work on shaping the braces to final dimension. The rough shape of the braces was about a 16th inch oversized in terms of height and width. I used my thumb plane to shape them to final height and remove much of the sides to reduce weight. The strength of the braces are in the height as they are quarter sawn and the grain pattern is perpendicular to the guitar back. Each end of the braces were tapered down to an eighth of an inch. I made a template using a scrap piece of particle board to make it easy to mark the shape of each brace. Once the braces were roughly shaped out and tapered, I fine-tuned them using various grits of sandpaper. I used painter's tape to prevent damage to the rosewood back. The final step was to mark out where the braces would attach to the sidewalls of the guitar sound box. This will all make much more sense in upcoming episodes. Once I had it marked out using my guitar mold, I used a miniature dovetail saw and sandpaper to cut the braces to length and remove any glue residue from the guitar back. The glue joint between the back and the sidewalls is critical as you will soon see. In the next episode, I'll show the build of the soundboard. Some of the steps are similar, so we will breeze through those and I'll focus on the sound hall and rosette. I learned some hard lessons creating the rosette and I'll share those with you then. Many of the tools that I use in today's video are specific to Luthery and were obtained from Stumac. I've listed them for you and I'll put links in the description so you can easily find them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.